Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop and I'm out in the heavenly backyard garden and look at it. It is just full of color. As a matter of fact, an explosion of color has prevailed over the last couple of weeks. And not only in the garden, but above, there was an explosion as well. A star about 21 million light years away in the pinwheel galaxy, also known as Messier 101. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Well, I heard about this supernova that was first observed around May 19th of this year, and cloudy skies prevailed across my region, so I couldn't see it at all. At all. But on the night of the 28th, in the morning of the 29th, I was able to get some clear skies across my region. So I opened up the telescope, which is undercover right now because another threat of rain is moving on in. And I wanted to see if I could see it. Now the telescope is the Orion Eon 130 millimeter refractor triplet. And that's about a five inch, five and a quarter inch diameter uh, objective lens. And I was wondering if I could see it with this telescope. I was amazed at just how bright that supernova appeared. As a matter of fact, it was so bright that it had produced a halo around the supernova itself. Let's take a look. I'm in the autofocus routine right now, and look, this is the nova right here, the supernova right here. It's showing up in the in the autofocus uh, regime, and I have a partly cloudy sky. Some, there are some high, thin clouds passing overhead, and I can still see the actual supernova. I mean, this is incredible. This is only like a five second exposure, and it's doing an autofocus routine. So, the, the, you know, there is, the, you can barely see the galaxy right, right in here. So, so <laughs> this is amazing. Such this thing is super bright as far as uh, as novas go. I mean, yeah, it's 21 million light years away, and it's showing up almost like one of the foreground stars in our own Milky Way galaxy. So this is this is impressive. You you, you got to think that if there was any kind of solar system or planetary system around this star, it is gone, uh, totally obliter obliterated. Um, there you can begin to see somewhat of the uh, galaxy right there. Also, the moon is waxing gibbous. It's rather bright out there right now as well. So uh, this is not a good uh, situation. But there, there's, the, there's the supernova right there. Now I'm doing a 60 second exposure. And then the next one I'll do is uh, 120. The galaxy right now is just about as, at, its, at its maximum elevation. Do you want to call that the zenith? Yeah, it's not quite the zenith, but it's at maximum elevation. Uh, if you look at that, um, there it is right there right now. So it's way up there. And it is, let's see, 68 degrees above the horizon. So it's way up high in the sky at my latitude here at 32 degrees north latitude. So anyway, there's the one minute uh, view. All right, here comes the two minute exposure. Let's see what it looks like. You might be able to see a little bit more of the uh, galaxy itself. Let's see. Well, well, we got those high clouds passing through as well. But uh, the, you can see a little bit more of that arm in the galaxy right here and that little nebulosity in, inside the arm itself. Uh, and the core is showing up a little bit brighter right now as well. But there's the Nova right there. That thing is bright. I don't. I, I. I can't calculate magnitudes from these pictures here, but I'm. I'm imagining. Imagine this thing is very bright. Uh, wow. Super impressive. <laughs> Remember, it's 21 million light years away, showing up that bright. All right. The next image is going to be a five-minute image, so this is going to take a while. So, I'm going to hit the pause mark here, and I'll come back at you. All right, I'm coming up to the five minute mark right now, uh, 4.45 at the moment. And uh, you know, looking at the uh, guiding uh, scope here, there are some high thin clouds passing through the, uh, the uh, field of view right now. There, you can barely see them right there. And uh, well, let's take a look at that picture coming in. Here it is. This is the five minute exposure through th some thin clouds right at the moment. So you can keep that in mind as we take a look at it. 
And yeah, there you can see a little bit more of the spiral out, uh, uh, the, the spiral core of the galaxy itself, and and, and the galaxy and the uh, the nebula, the uh, the nova, the supernova, the star that it exploded. It went bluey. Um, yeah, look how bright it seems brighter tonight than it was three nights ago. I wonder if it, if it is getting brighter. It's, I can't really judge it because I've got these high thin clouds passing overhead. Let's take a look at the uh, satellite imagery and I can bring it over here. And uh, there we have the, um, yeah, I'm right here. So you can see these high thin clouds are streaming overhead. Just to my south, there are some thicker clouds that are advancing in toward my area. So I'm gonna have to shut down. I'm gonna try to get a picture of the moon first before I do that. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, th this is, um, totally amazing to me uh, this view right here so yeah let's zoom in just a little bit here and see what happens look at that uh, got a pretty good uh, tracking even with the um, it's not the best tracking because I do have these uh, clouds passing on through but uh, yeah there are some other of the stars fairly round a little bit off I mean, it's almost impossible to track during a uh, bright moon and the clouds passing through, thin clouds. And you can see the tracking is going bonkers over here. Uh, looking at the uh, PhD2, you can see the brightness of the star bouncing all over the place as the clouds go passing through. And there you can see more clouds passing through and uh, makes it tough on the, uh, on the guiding. More clouds. Yeah, this is the best it's going to get for tonight um, with this right here. So with that, I'm going to stop it right now. And I'm going to take a picture of the moon. So the galaxy is about the size of the full moon. Almost. I'll, I'll compare that in, in a moment. I got the pictures from the other night, but I wanted to show you just how bright uh, this object is, even in doing an autofocus, it shows up. It's just incredibly bright um, for being that distance. I mean, you're not going to be able to see it with your eyes, uh, but uh, with small telescopes, you'll be able to see this supernova. Um, it's just really incredible. So, okay. All right, first of all, let's take a look. Where is this in the sky? Well, it's in and around the Big Dipper or Ursa Major out in the tail area over here. You got the famous uh, M51 Whirlpool Galaxy nearby. On the other side of the tail, uh, there you have M101, the Pinwheel Galaxy. So it's located uh, high up in the northern sky. So all northern latitudes should be able to see this. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you might have some issues uh, particularly in Australia. I don't know if you'll be able to see this far north. But anyway, the Northern Hemisphere, no problems whatsoever. Now, here is the first five minute sub that I had using the L-Pro filter, the Optolong L-Pro filter. And even with that, you can see um, how much brighter the, neb the um, Nova is right there. And uh, let's zoom in on that. Look how bright that is. Uh, it compares with the foreground stars in and around the uh, our galaxy, uh, showing in the distance this galaxy here, which is 21 million light years away. But that's the uh, nova right there, uh, this star right here. Now, let's go back and um, look at the uh, combination of uh, four hours of data. And there you have it right there. Uh, this is before I did some additional processing. But there you can see it, it was so bright. You look at all the other stars. They're fairly clean, but the, the uh, nova, it is so bright, it produced a halo around the star itself or the, the exploding or the explosion itself. Now, looking at the uh, another more final picture here, uh, processed a little bit better. There you can see, once again, the, the nova uh, with the other stars. And one other uh, view here. Let's take a look at this one right here. Um, this is with the combination of three hours of the L Pro filter and one hour of UV IR filter. Now with the Pro, I use five minute uh, sub exposures. With the UV IR cut, I used a 
uh, two minute exposure for each image. And I had clouds passing through, so I lost about half of the imagery uh, in the one hour time. So instead of 30, I had about 15 images. Uh, had to throw away the others because of cloud contamination. So let's go into uh, uh, Photoshop because I have another, a couple of uh, examples set up over here. And uh, here we go right here. This is the moon from last night uh, uh, um, when I was taking the uh, sub uh, shots and setting up the imagery and all that for this video. I wanted to compare it with the size of the galaxy that's 21 million light years away. This galaxy contains about a trillion stars, so it is quite large. And uh, there's the galaxy right there. Uh, these, uh, the same dimensions on the camera, the same uh, size on the camera. Uh, so the same field of view and what have you. So put the two together and there you can see it's about one half the size of the moon. It's a fairly large galaxy uh, up in the sky. Um, but the, uh, uh, there, there's the actual size of the moon versus the actual size of the galaxy. Now, something else I wanted to show you here is over here. This is a picture of M101 that I took June 1st, last year, 2022. Now, I want you to look in this area right over here because that's where the Nova occurred. Can you spot it? <laughs> It's almost impossible not to spot it when you put a blink on there. This is uh, from the night of May 28th, the morning of May 29th. And this is June 1st, uh, the, the previous year. So it looks like that little star there or one right next to it is the one that blew up with a catastrophic explosion uh, resulting in this huge, huge uh, massive star explosion. A lot of people ask me, is there a danger from this supernova affecting the Earth? The answer is no. It is just so far away, 21 million light years away. As a matter of fact, the, the circle of danger would have to be within 150 light years from Earth. And this one's 21 million light years away. Now, what about Betelgeuse, the, the star up in Orion? A lot of people have been speculating that that star is going to go supernova anytime soon. Well, anytime between now and 100,000 years, that's soon, geologically speaking, astronomically speaking. But anyway, uh, Betelgeuse is about 650 light years away, still far enough away so that it would not affect the Earth, but close enough that it would be spectacular if it did. Now, the bad news is any planet orbiting these stars, particularly that one over in uh, Messier 101, the, the pinwheel galaxy, uh, any planet was just simply obliterated when that star exploded. So that star died. Actually, Nova means new uh, because it looks like a new star up in the sky you never saw before, but it's actually the death of a star. But come, what comes with the death comes life. As a matter of fact, first generation stars generally produce helium and nitrogen, mostly nitrogen, and, they fuse it in, and it fuses into helium. And when that star explodes in the end of its life, uh, it gives off lithium and helium and hydrogen and maybe some oxygen and uh, sulfur and carbon, which is essential for the building blocks of organic life. A second generation star uh, is a star that forms from the material of this first star. So besides having just helium as its core fuel, it also has within the core uh, the lithium and the, uh, the oxygen, the sulfur and the carbon uh, to uh, work with. And when that star explodes, it produces even heavier metals. We're talking irons and uranium even when those stars explode. Now, the Earth Sun system probably is a third generation star. In other words, uh, it took the first generation star to explode to produce the lighter elements and then the second generation stars to explode to produce the heavier elements. The elements that are in our body right now were furnished, I guess you can say, inside a second generation star. So as the star explodes, it dies, but new life comes from these stars. Everything about it we're stardust from a star that exploded millions and millions, perhaps a billion years ago. And when our star dies, I don't think it'll explode like that, but other stars will. And that'll sp send out more elements into the universe for the creation of new forms of life, perhaps. Anyway, 
it's all extremely interesting. This science of astrophotography and this science of astronomy and astrophysics, it's just mind-boggling when you start sitting down and thinking about it. And uh, it just goes on and on and on. So, you know, if you, if you, if you like these kind of videos, you know, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm right here at Heavenly Backyard Astronomy on YouTube. And uh, if, if you like this video, please hit the like button below. And if you have any comments, by all means, leave your comments below as well. Uh, I, I like reading those comments. And also, if you put a comment down and hit the like button, it helps with that what's called algorithm, that YouTube algorithm that helps push this video out to other people who are not subscribed to this channel so that they might be able to see it as well. And of course, if you uh, really like this video and you want to share it with somebody else, you can share it as well. So go ahead and do that. That all helps. And if you'd like to join my channel, uh, you can do that. Or if you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee to help uh, fray off some of these expensive, uh, I, I love my coffee. And uh, you can do that too. It's only $2 a cup. So anyway, uh, to me, it's, it's just amazing what's out there up in the heavenly skies. And that supernova, it's just mind boggling what happens when these things happen. Anyway, thanks for watching. And remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders like that supernova up in Messier 101. And all of these are in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone. <laughs>